Rally, a motorsport staple. In Rally, there is a driver and a navigator. The navigator guides the driver throughout the course, and the driver's job is to get to the finish as fast as they can. Rally can also have both the navigator and the driver walk through dangerous conditions. Courses are tight, sometimes muddy, and sometimes snowy. If you don't listen to your navigator or if the driver makes a fuck up, you'll end up in a horrific accident. It's dangerous, thrilling, and exciting. Also, drivers can pull off some pretty nasty drifts. In today's market, rally games are plentiful. We have the Dirt Series and the official WRC games, WRC standing for World Rally Championship. But there is one game that created the modern rally game, Sega Rally Championship 1995, developed by Sega AM3 and directed by Kenji Sasatsuki. Kenji Sasatsuki worked with Sega since 1991 along with his own company, Graphics Technologies. Graphics Technologies specialized in CGI and game development. Sega contacted Graphics Technologies to assist in the development of their Sega AS1 attraction. However, in 1993, Sasatsuki was working with Namco on the first Ridge Racer, an arcade racer that prides itself in high-speed drifting. Ridge Racer was received positively and rewarded Best Driving Game in 1995 by Electronic Gaming Monthly. After his work on Ridge Racer, he left Namco and joined Sega full-time. At the time joining Sega, Sega released their answer to Ridge Racer with Daytona USA. Sasaki wanted to make a game that was different from Ridge Racer and Daytona USA. He decided that Rally would be a perfect fit for the game. In this Sega Voice interview, Sasaki had this to say about the subject. Sega Rally series. At the time, formula cars and circuits were mainstream, so I came up with the idea of a game set on public roads and gravel roads to give it a fresh look. In October 1994, Sega Rally Championship 1995 was released in arcades to critical acclaim. Game Pro ranked it 6th best racing game ever in 1996. This game inspired the Dirt series, originally called Colin McRae Rally. Without Sega Rally Championship, there might not have been a modern rally sim game today. You are approaching Saturn. You are only seconds away. I have arranged for you to meet my companion. He will lead you. Watch and listen. Please don't disappoint him. He doesn't like that. Enter the Sega Saturn, one of my favorite failures. The Sega Saturn came with a surprise launch here in North America, so it could compete with the Sony PlayStation. Launched in May 11, 1995 with a hefty price of $399, with inflation that would be over $700 in today's market, Saturn launched with 6 games. Among those 6 games was Daytona USA. Daytona USA was a technical showpiece in the arcade, showing off the power of the Sega Model 2 arcade board. A multi-million dollar arcade board that powered many classics such as Virtua Cop, The House of the Dead, and our subject Sega Rally Championship 1995. With the success of Daytona USA in the arcade, it was a no-brainer to bring it home. However, with the launch of the Sega Saturn in North America and the rush development of the port, the transition to console was rough. Daytona USA on Saturn took a hit in performance and visual quality. The draw distance was poor, and says silky smooth 60 frames per second like the arcade original, the Saturn version could only go up to 20, and there was no multiplayer. While it was well received, critics and players overall agreed that the visuals were not great. With the arrival of the Sony PlayStation, which was cheaper for $299, with inflation that's under $600 in today's market, there were 10 launch titles, and among those titles was a Port of Ridge Racer. Compared to Daytona USA on Saturn, Ridge Racer on PlayStation had a greater draw distance and ran at 30 frames per second. It may not be 60 frames per second like the arcade original, but still visually pleasing compared to Daytona USA on Saturn. Okay, it's 1995 and you're shopping for a next-gen console. You see a kiosk for both the Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation. The Saturn side is showing Daytona USA and the PlayStation side is showing Ridge Racer. The Saturn is pricier, has fewer games compared to PlayStation. And Daytona USA may play like the arcade game, but the visuals are not the best. The PlayStation is cheaper, has more games, and Ridge Racer plays and looks closer to the arcade original. 
With a surprise launch, lackluster launch titles, and previous decisions, Sega had a rough with the Saturn. Players were starting to lose their faith in the company. At the end of 1995, the Sega Saturn sold 400,000 units. The Sony PlayStation sold double that amount. In 1996, Sega wanted to redeem themselves and show that the Sega Saturn is a capable console. We got games like Nights into Dreams, Guardian Heroes, Virtual Cop 2, even a take on Daytona with Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition. Try saying that five times fast, that you that good god. And lastly, they released Sega Rally Championship 1995. Sega Rally released on the Saturn on November 18, 1996, going for $60 with inflation that's over $100 in today's market. <laughs> to start off with the gameplay, we have Arcade Mode, Time Attack, and 2-player multiplayer. Arcade Mode contains Championship and Practice Mode. The Championship Mode is the bread and butter of the game, it's a one-lap race to the finish. Meanwhile, in practice mode, we have a two-lap 1v1 circuit-style race. Once you cross the finish line, you proceed to the next stage. If you finish fifth in the last stage, then you'll start off fifth in the next. Sega struck a deal with Fiat and Toyota to use their cars and logos in the game. There are three cars to choose from. The Toyota Celica GT4, a Lancia Delta HF Integral, and the Lancia Stratos HF. The Lancia Stratos is a Saturn and PC exclusive. You can unlock the car by placing first in Lakeside on the normal difficulty in Championship mode. Trust me, we'll get to Lakeside later. All three cars were real Group A rally cars. The developers were considering a fourth car like the Toyota Supra, but sadly there is no Supra in the final game. The controls feel smooth. By default you press B to accelerate, A or C to brake, X, Y, Z to change camera angles, L and R to shift gears. Driving feels great, you feel like you're gripping or slipping on different surfaces. Drifting feels so much more natural compared to Ridge Racer. In the original Ridge Racer, when you're coming out of the drift, the car snaps back into place. It's disorienting and frustrating. In Sega Rally, you have total control. The game plays nicely with a regular Saturn pad, but the Saturn wheel is supported. The Toyota Celica is the balanced car, the Lancia Delta has higher acceleration, and the Lancia Stratos has even higher acceleration and top speed, which makes it tricky to control while cornering. If you pick manual transmission, your car's top speed increases. You can also tune your car in the options menu, like a looser suspension and such. We also have a navigator beside us. The navigator tells you what's coming up next on the course. Jumps, easy rights, lefts, etc. It's up to the player and how they want to approach the section and get to the end of the course as fast as they can. There are four stages in total. The desert stage is a wide open and short course that helps players understand how their car works. A solid course. The forest stage is a bit more narrow and there are a lot of corners, which includes this hairpin and this sharp left. The mountain stage is tighter than the last and contains a lot more sharp turns. If you come first on the mountain stage, you unlock the lakeside stage. This is the hardest course in the game. Consider this course as an ultimate test, testing you what you learned from prior stages. The reason why this stage is so difficult is because it's so f***ing thin. Timing and precision are key in this course. Time attack is time attack, and local multiplayer is local multiplayer. I had my roommate play the game with me. It was his first time playing it, and in his first race, he wasn't doing so hot. But after the first race, something clicked. It was getting on me. It was getting intense at times. We were having fun. I wish that I had captured the mic audio, but, but I had to mute it for the capture audio. The gameplay is simple, but effective, which is all you can ask for in an arcade game. There is some replayability, all thanks to cheat codes. I miss cheat codes, man. They seriously need to come back. Codes don't like the Lancia Stratos, playing Lakeside, faster cars, and weird stages. I'll leave a list of codes in the description. You can also go back for getting a better time on Time Attack or play in two player multiplayer. What keeps you coming back is the quality of the gameplay at its core. pretty good looking game. If we're going to compare it to the arcade original, sure it took a hit, but this looks damn good for the system. 
higher draw distance compared to Daytona USA while running at 30 frames per second. What's weird for me that Ridge Racer on PlayStation also runs at 30, but Sega Rally on Saturn feels smoother. I love the color choice in each stage. I love the greens in the forest, the blues on the mountain, and the gorgeous autumn colors of Lakeside giving this game such a stylish look. The multiplayer looks solid still maintaining 30 frames per second. Polygons, textures, and draw distance took a hit. I do want to point out that the draw distance is still solid and will not ruin the gameplay. Even though it's a massive improvement compared to Daytona USA, there are a few snags. You can somewhat see outside the game while watching replays. You can see trees floating in the skybox. It doesn't break the game for me, but it's something to point out. The soundtrack is stellar. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm probably gonna botch this, but uh, Takanobu Mitsuyoshi, famous for the Daytona's USA soundtrack, originally composed the arcade soundtrack. Sega Rally Championship is going for power sound. Some songs have a high focus on the guitar in order to give it a certain oomph to it. Like you're in a battle and you have to win. Track ignition. The song plays on Lakeside, the toughest course in the game. The main focus of this track is the keys and drum samples. It gives off a decisive sound, like when you're racing, you hear this track and you'll probably go, huh, oh shit, am I, am I gonna win this one? Overall, Takenobu Mitsuyoshi did a great job with the score. Now enter... Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm probably gonna botch this one. Please forgive me. Um, Naofumi Hataya? Hataya? You, you know what? Hold up. Um, just let me... I'm gonna Google this shit real quick. Naofumi Hataya, famous for the involvement of the Sonic CD Japanese soundtrack. Tasu rearranged the arcade soundtrack and make a couple new songs for the Saturn home conversion since the Saturn can use Red Book audio. Not only do the songs keep the same theme, but this, without a doubt, is the best version of the soundtrack. The original songs are of higher quality and each stage has its own replay music. And it's amazing. Each replay has the theme of nostalgia to it. My personal favorite has to be the four stage replay theme. It has so much feel good, it reminds me of simpler times. Overall, this is a top-notch looking and sounding game. It holds up well today. In conclusion, Sega Rally Championship is a fantastic game. I highly recommend it if you're remotely interested in racing games, and I believe it should be in every Saturn owner's collection. I'm certainly not afraid to give it an A rank. This is a must play. What do you think of Sega Rally on Saturn? Do you agree with my take or disagree? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments or on my Discord server. Thank you for watching, and have a very blessed day.